I was pleasantly surprised when when Sam told me why I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, he's he was like, I think it was important to add another that middle generation perspective um, in the circumstances. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I mean, that makes so much sense. And I do feel like a Gen Z millennial aged person would would feel the most emboldened to be as outspoken, as opinionated, as self-assured as Ruth is. Um, so, and I think it just creates even more dynamicism in the relationships to her father, to Amanda, to the children, and to the world. Yeah, I mean, beside the fact that I was in the room with legends, and with award winners and with very seasoned OGs. Um, I think one of the biggest takeaways is that they were like, just like me. <laughs> Celebrities are just like us, you know what I mean? They, we, we were all there doing the same thing. We all had the same, we had a common goal. We were all committed to the work, to the storytelling. They were so respectful and so welcoming of me and treated me as a peer, which was a huge honor. And it also requires you or challenges you to rise to the occasion in a way in which I felt safe to do that with them. Um, I felt super safe with all of them. And they also love to play, you know, they're not, um, rigid people, they're not jaded people. Um, we were really a, a company, which um, was a joy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like, I mean, it's quite literally is 99 no's and one yes <laughs> between, between projects. But I mean, for me, like what keeps me going? I, I'm, this, this is just like what I do. This is, this is all that I do, it is, the only thing I want to do, it is the thing that I feel called to do. Um, and I also understand that there, if you choose to be an actor or a creative of most kinds, like you have to have tough skin and you have to accept the fact that most of your career will be rejection. And you will get lucky that one time and then you'll go back to rejection and you'll get lucky again or, you know what I mean? Um, and the, the sort of masochistic thing about this work is that you get hired once and there is no guarantee that you will have a job again. You have to be, you go back to square one every single time. Um, so you just have to, I mean, you really do have to love it more than anything else to, ex to take the, all of that rejection, all of that no. Um, actually so fun. <laughs> um, filming Lock Henry is great. Um, Sam Miller is sort of randomly, coincidentally, my boyfriend's best friend's dad. So I'd like known, and of course I knew his previous works, um, but I had like known of him in a sort of like familial way. I just like knew him more as like, that's Gil's dad. Um, and of course, I had been a fan of Black Mirror, as so many people rightfully are for ages. And when that audition came through, I was like, oh my God, Black Mirror, what an amazing opportunity. And my boyfriend was like, wait, Sam Miller, that's Gil's dad. <laughs> so I was like, oh, how cool. I'll finally get to like hang out with Gil's dad if I get to do this. Um, and I was cast, which was amazing. So I felt very much like I was going to work with the sort of friend and, and, um, Sam, my co-star, um, and I and Daniel Portman, we all just got on so well. So we were doing this like creepy, intense thing, but like between takes, we were just like messing around and like playing music and getting to know each other and going out for dinners in Glasgow. Um, so it was just like a really good time. And I'd never been to Scotland, so that was a nice, um, a nice little. It was like kind of like a weird, <laughs> fun vacation. <laughs> I have a friend who has property outside of the city that has a bunker on it already. So that would be my first phone call. I'd be like, hey, <laughs> so when are we going? <laughs> I think they absolutely have the right idea to get out of the city. I wouldn't want to at all. I love my apartment. I love all my 
things that I've collected and curated, all my photo albums. I love my cats. Obviously, my cats would come with me. Um, I love my neighborhood, but I, I think getting out of the city is the first step. My cats are Natalia and Bang Bang. They're um, Siamese sisters. That no, no two shoot days are the same ever. Um, but I think, like, in a really general sense, my sort of pre-work routine is um, wake up, brush teeth, wash face, <laughs> have a, something caffeinated, tea. Usually I'm not a coffee drinker, so tea. Um, and whatever music is going to get me in the mood for the day. And then we get to set, we do hair and makeup and costume, and then we go work. Um, and then after, I, depending on what hours we're working, um, I'll just have something to eat and like put on whatever show I'm watching as like a decompressor. And then right before I go to bed, I um, like review whatever work I'm doing the next day. Um, oh, <laughs> honestly, it was, uh, I'm not sure that I used music. I mean, if I'm just trying to wake myself up in the morning, it's like whatever, like R&B, hip hop situation that I'm into or like some some oldies maybe to just like wake me, literally. Um, but I don't think I really, like all the music that feels right for this film is like ominous and eerie and kind of scary. And like when I was not, like when we weren't rolling, I wanted to feel very much in my own body. I don't want to like hold on to the anxiety and the stress of this film because it's just like a little bit too much to take on for that amount of time. We did, actually, you know, we, we, we shot it from all the angles and of course we, it was CGI, so we did have to do it with like, you know, the plate thing and that like silver ball thing. And, but we weren't entirely alone. There were some lovely crew members holding fake deer head things in front of us. But for the most part, yes, it was just me and Julia, um, you know, screaming <laughs> by ourselves. Oh, what would I like to manifest for myself next year? Um, I would like to manifest, well, I have, I have just started my own little writing endeavor. I've been writing. So I'm manifesting my project being sold. Um, and getting to work on something that I've developed from the beginning. I really, really, really want to do a, a movie musical. Um, I grew up in musical theater. Musical theater was always my gig, and I really miss singing. Um, so I'd love to blend my worlds and do a movie musical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Like nobody's really said anything to me about that. That that picture is so hilarious to me. I was like, I don't know how old I was, eight or ten maybe. And I played the genie in Aladdin in a like a community theater production. Um and it's they painted me blue and I have like real like like fake you know, like a weave on my chin for my little goatee and out of my my mom like made the little braid thing. Um but nobody has like said anything. Like maybe two of my friends, my boyfriend was like, there's no way you did that, that is so funny. And my best friend was like, I'm gagging, like what is that? But nobody else has really said anything about it. But I just thought it was funny. Um, I, uh, I mean, it was okay. If I like wasn't in it, but I would seen it, I would say like, Sam Esmail is a brilliant, director, he's an amazing filmmaker, and there's a bunch of amazing people in it, Miss Julia and Mahershala and Ethan, and some newcomer named Myhala, um, <laughs> and, and you should go see it. It's it's like, if you like creepy crawly, sort of make your skin crawl, and then when you leave the theater, you're, you wanna like, you're, you have questions and you wanna have conversations, you know, like that sort of thing. If you're into that, go see this movie.